let's call a pay-per-view Great Balls of Fire. And then, to top it all off, have the logo for the event look like a set of flaming testicles. This sounds like some crap Vince Russo would come up with. You know the guy who named TNA tits and ass wrestling? That's what TNA really stood for, let's be honest. This seems like some Russo crap. But this wasn't. This was a Vince McMahon <laughs> creation. I hope we get WWE balls trending on Twitter Sunday night. That will be incredible. But anyways, looking ahead to this show, um, for kind of a filler pay-per-view, I- I'm excited for it. Primarily because of the ambulance match, the universal title match. I'm looking forward to both of those. Uh, the rest of this card is really filled with a lot of stuff I could give two shits less about, which is a lot of WWE shows now. So as long as those two big matches deliver, I won't be too upset Sunday night. Hopefully something else or a couple other things step up and surprise me a little bit. Then I'll feel a lot better about the show. But it does leave a lot of pressure on the two big matches. Because if they don't deliver, we could be in for a long night and perhaps one hell of an epic rant of a goodness gracious great balls of fire review. But in the meantime, let's take a look ahead to Sunday night's show. What? We're live? Like right now? God damn it, we're professionals here. Every week, Bush League bullshit. My great balls of Schlag Daddy fire blowing in the breeze. But if you people want to help make wrestling fun again, you have one job. Hashtag subscribe or die. Find that subscribe button and you click it, you click it good, and you click it right now, and then you tell everybody else to do it. Subscribe or die. Subscribe or die. Subscribe or die. The Austin Aries has left the Purple Rope crew. So what does that mean? Everybody's got to saddle up and help out the pre-show posse. Tazawa versus Neville, destined for the pre-show. Once you see them Purple Robes, you know it's a match the company doesn't give a crap about. And Tazawa being in this spot is odd. Why is he a part of the Titus brand? That should have been somebody like Cedric Alexander or Rich Swan or something like that. It just doesn't make very good sense. It seems like a very much of a square peg in a round hole type of situation. Either way, I'm talking about this way more than I should because at this point in time, who gives a shit about this cruiserweight division? Neville is a cruiserweight god. How dare this company relegate him to the pre-show? And what a weird world we're in. The Schleg Daddies reviewing New Japan? And of course, trashing on the Young Bucks, who are awesome. And Austin Aries is asking for his release from WWE and gets it? No, not the greatest man that ever lived. There's a reason he's called the greatest man that ever lived. Because he's the greatest man that ever lived. And he needs to be in WWE. <laughs> Austin, please come back. Please, please, we need you. We gotta have you. Please. Uh, unless you go to New Japan and then, oh my god, you could work with Kenny Omega. And then you could tear the house down with Milky Way graded matches. <laughs> when you look at Enzo and you look at Big Cass... Maybe not for you, but for me, I look at opportunity squandered. There was more mileage to get out of these guys as a tag team. And the WWE pulled the rug out from under them way too soon. And maybe there were intentions and positive intentions there. And maybe they just don't fucking know what they're doing. And it it could definitely go in either. If anything, I would lean more towards the latter. But with that said, with that said, Enzo Big Cass, an example of a story... That is good in theory, a story, especially when it comes to the match, that's really easy to tell, but a story that I'm not buying and I don't give a shit about, and you really have only one conclusion, Enzo needs to get the shit kicked out of him by the cast hole, and Big Cass needs to go over here. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not sure you're aware, but this past weekend, myself and the Schlig Daddy, and in the appropriate order I may add, Reviewed Slammiversary 15. What a show it was. It felt good, baby. It felt real good to be back. To be back where the Cowboy Dick Stone belongs, baby. And just so you know, all the Impact Wrestling fun is back on OTRS Central. We reviewing the show every week. So you gotta check it out, Daddy. Woo! Ride the Dick Stone. Because you never know when the Schleg Daddy Gonna go batshit and assume the position. Then you've got an icy title match where it's not Heath Slater versus the mid-card MVP of WWE and The Miz. Seriously. 
how many more irrelevant characters that make it on TV each week for WWE are there than Dean Ambrose. This dude is trash. He's garbage. He sucks. He clearly doesn't care. Don't blame the creative. Blame the performer. Fuck Dean Ambrose. Can't wait for Miz to get over on this match and Dean to go the fuck away. As I like to do from time to time, I was thinking. And I was thinking Elias Sampson, Intercontinental Champion. That's a really cool bring to it. But there's some nasty smelling dude blocking Elias's path. So I wrote a song about it. Please hold your applause to the end. A one, a two, a one, two, three, four. Dean's wrestling skills are so plain. Like his average girlfriend, Renee. But we all know the truth. He'd rather be banging Tanae, Tanae. Another title match for him. All the fans will take a pass. Please God do something with that hair. Hit the showers, wash your nasty ass. You smell. Wash your nasty ass. Wash that nasty ass. Seth Rollins versus Bray Wyatt. <sighs> Randall Keith Orton. Maharaja sucks. Punjabi present match. Yay. Now, the Iron Man match for the Raw Tag Team Championships, in theory, has potential. Sheamus and Cesaro versus the Hardy Boys. Has a lot of potential. But these guys have touched so damn much that I'm just at the point again where I really don't care. And going into this, I'm assuming Sheamus and Cesaro retain. And if that happens, where do you go with the Hardys from here? And I don't just want to hear the excuse about Global Force Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, TNA, whatever the hell you want to call them, holding up the Broken Hardy shit. WWE could have come up with something in the meantime to think you went from that awesome return at WrestleMania 33 to three plus months later, the Hardys really, frankly, are just another team. This match should be a big deal. The Hardys should be one of the biggest, hottest acts in this company. And they just feel like two other dudes now, and that's a shame. Think about how just weird and stupid this sounds. If Sasha Banks beats Alexa Bliss on Sunday, she will be a four-time women's champion in WWE. Four fucking times. Four times already. My God. Does anybody else see a problem with that? Giving Sasha Banks yet another title shot is not keeping this interesting. And that's no type of revolution at all. It just seems like the same old shit. Come Sunday night, let's go Alexa Bliss and move on to fucking somebody else other than Sasha Banks, please. <laughs> Has anybody seen my carrots and nuts? <laughs> Tell those bitches to cover up their boobies. <laughs> And a snow goat. I'm coming for you, big sexies. Where are you? <laughs> you know, for this ambulance match between Reigns and Strowman, for a while I was expecting that Roman's going to win. They're just going to force this. They got a Cena 2.0 this crap. They can't have the big dog look vulnerable here because, after all, it's his yard. But now, as we get closer to the match... I really wonder if we're starting to see a little bit of a seismic shift in WWE's philosophy and they're ready to roll with Braun Strowman. I wouldn't be surprised if he wins this ambulance match on Sunday. And I'll say, I give the WWE credit because they didn't just have a stipulation. They've built to that stipulation. They've incorporated the stipulation the past few Raws. That's a way you make this feel like a big deal. This is the way you make this feel like a big fight. You've been building to this match for months. And I can't wait to see what happens on Sunday night. 
Who is going to win though? Why don't you tell me in the comment section below? And now let's hear from Summer and Piglet and get their thoughts on what's going to go down in this ambulance match Sunday night. Roman Reigns. Braun Strowman, my Romies, has main evented three straight WrestleManias. Ask The Undertaker how that goes when he gets into the big dog's yard. Roman most certainly is not about to lose so to some righted up Teddy Ruxpin Care Bear looking motherfucker. It's like the once mighty Roman Empire was brought down. So too will Braun Strowman bring down Roman Reigns on Sunday. Summer says Roman Reigns will rule supreme come Sunday over Braun Strowman's broke ass at Great Balls of Fire. Hell yeah, bitches. Roman, love you. Love you, Roman. Call me. Roman, love you. Call me. Don't care what her ego fuck says. Braun Strowman will bring down Roman Reigns' fishy butt on Sunday at Great Balls of Fire. Why? Because the piglet and the pigsty said so. In the main event, the other big money match of WWE Balls, the universal title match between Samoa Joe and Brock Lesnar. This to me feels like a big fight. It feels like a big deal. It feels like something special. It feels like a main event of a pay-per-view. Not just because it's going on last, and not even just because of the characters. The way the story's been cultivated and developed, even with the WWE kind of rushing through it, has been pretty good. It's piqued my interest even more. I really hope that this continues on to SummerSlam, but I don't know if it's going to. I mean, it may very well just be a thing where they have a little bit of a match and then Brock's ultimately going to go over and we continue with business as usual. But just because you can do that type of decisive finish doesn't mean you should. Maybe the best way to go is with some type of indecisive finish where both guys are left out, they can't answer for the 10 count, and then you have a real reason for a return match at SummerSlam. And at that point in time, if you want to have Brock go over, so be it. This match, I hope, lives up to the build of what we've seen over the past few weeks on Raw. Because if it does, man, this is going to feel pretty special. And it's not even a big four pay-per-view main event. Let's hope. Because frankly, the way I look at it is, between the ambulance match and this match, this show really needs these two to deliver and carry the lion's share of the weight. But you can let me know what you think. Do you think this is going to be a good show? Do you think it's all about these two matches? Or are there other things that I'm leaving out that could make this a surprise? Or do you think it doesn't matter because WWE just fucking sucks anyways? Well, let me know in the comments section down below. Thanks for watching. And remember here at OTR Essential, uh, it's... Not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need. Take it easy.